It's hard to say the word homeless sometimes because I think that we as a society, I know myself, I do too, have like a stigma of what a homeless person looks like. Okay, I don't look like a homeless person, not in my eyes. And it would just never resonate with me because that's not the way I saw homeless, but we literally had nowhere to go. We were homeless. Oh, I lose you. Oh husband had just had heart surgery and he didn't do good. He just did not do good for weeks and weeks after that. The landlord had decided that he wanted to have the home back and they wanted us out by a certain time and we couldn't do it. We couldn't be out by that time. And they said, okay, we're starting the eviction process. And we said, okay, we understand. You have to do what you have to do, but we needed more time. So November of 2019, we're homeless. So I gotta go first. So you already gave me my two extras. Write it down, just lay it down. It's our property. Oh no, we're gonna keep it. By we're us. raising grandchildren. So we have three grandchildren, three. 13, 12, and seven now. And we're in a two bed extended stay hotel with a two plate, a, a stove, no oven, a refrigerator, a little sink. And the only way to have any privacy was in the bathroom. It, it honestly, it was horrible. It was just absolutely horrible. Every dime we had went to staying there. So there was no going out. There's no extra. So yeah, you feel completely stuck. All right. And I got to the point where I just would say to my husband, I, 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 can't, I can't do this. I can't keep doing this. I don't know how much longer we can do this. We can't housing authority. How can I help you? Sure. That's when we started really working with Spokane Housing Authority. We got to ask questions and we got to hear about the particular program that we were going to be in and how it would affect us and what our responsibilities were and what they were gonna do for us as well. And so for us, it was just being a part of the process and continuing to mark the boxes off and stay with it. So do you want me to just send you the draft? And it just kind of seemed like everywhere we went, there was a roadblock. Tina um, was issued a Housing Choice Voucher, which is a rental assistance. It was incredible how much work she had done to advocate for herself to find a place to live. And still, she, she just couldn't get there and couldn't get there. Um, she was doing everything right, everything right. Finally, after this time in limbo, it was check, 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 and here we are. Are those getting done? Not good. No, I think they need to be done a little That's bit more. That's all. The reality is that there is no place in the country where a minimum wage worker can afford the average two-bedroom apartment. No place in the country. Come hold this for one minute. Please. So we play a critical role in trying to make sure that we're providing that housing for folks that are really, really needing it. I had wrapped homelessness up into a little box that it wasn't that. It wasn't a product of being a drug abuse or an alcoholic or poor choices. It really was just a circumstance of life. Everybody deserves a place to call home. Housing is the foundation on which you build every other part of your life. To work or be healthy or um, take care of your children, you really need that, that foundation of a home in order to make that work. Now the doors are oh, on. Oh, pictures yeah. in there. That's for a next, next touch there. So. It's an incredible feeling to know that you have people that are backing you up and that you can get advice from. Uh, that's probably been the biggest deal right there, is being able to rely on Daniel, on Phil, on other people at Spokane Housing Authority, Chelsea, Nancy, um, all of those people to give the direction that was needed. That's been huge. Yeah. 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 Yeah.